This video offers closed caption in more than 15 languages. To choose your desired language, click on the CC icon and the circle tool icon. Hello beautiful people! I hope everybody is doing great. Let me give you a quick tour. Today, I'll show you some of the most popular and essential places to visit in Istanbul. Our first stop is the world-renowned Blue Mosque, followed by Hagia Sophia, Ortakoy, and Sultan Soleimani Mosque. You can accomplish all of this location in just one day. Since it is currently the month of Ramadan, I will also give you a quick glimpse of how Turkish Muslims celebrate Ramadan breaks. I'll try to keep this video brief and not going too much into details. Are you excited to see these places? Let's do it! Istanbul is a city known for its beautiful mosque and the call for prayer also known as Azan. It's a fascinating experience that occurs five times a day. So, what is Odu? Odu is the cleansing processing that every Muslim undergoes before entering the mosque for prayer. You will notice several faucets in the area where Muslims wash their hands up to the elbows, feet up to the ankles, nose, ears, neck, face, and mouth. This ritual is performed five times a day and is an excellent way to prevent the spread of germs and bacteria. When I visit Istanbul, I always stay in a hotel near the Blue Mosque. This is because it is very convenient. I can easily walk to several places such as Blue Mosque, Soleimani Mosque, Grand Bazaar, Hagia Sophia and many restaurants around. Although the streets can be sometimes confusing, I always find my way around eventually. One thing I have noticed in Istanbul is that many houses have metal bars or metal fans on their windows, especially on the ground floor. This is to protect against intruders. I have not seen this in the United States and I suspect it may not be allowed by the American building fire code. And you know what? I have seen this similar protective measures in many other countries. Unfortunately, the Blue Mosque has undergone renovation over the past few years and now it has limited space available for prayers and limited space for the tourist. Non-Muslim tourists are welcome to visit. Take your photos. No problem. Tourists shouldn't visit in a group during the prayer time. If you are alone and want to observe the prayer, then it's okay. Just to remember, follow the dress code. These posters are intent to tourists unfamiliar with the Islamic religion. In the absence of your tour guide, visitor can read this poster to gain knowledge about Islam and Muslims. One poster mentioned here, if you look at this one, that Muslim believes in Adam and Eve. 
and the family tree of Noah, Sam, and Ham. Look at this poster featuring the Virgin Mary, mother of Jesus. It's important to note that for Muslims, belief in Jesus and Mary is a fundamental aspect of their faith. One cannot be considered a true Muslim without this belief. The word Allah means God in Arabic, originating from the Aramaic language. All Arab Christians and Jews also use the same word to refer to God, which is means Allah. They all use the same word. Unfortunately, there is a misconception in the Western world that Allah is exclusively used by Muslim to refer to their God. But this interpretation is totally incorrect. Do you know what is hijab or headscarf? It's a term that means partition or barrier and is worn as a symbol of modesty. Interestingly, even during the time of the Virgin Mary, women in even in the Roman or Greek empires used to wear headscarf. Even nowadays, the non in the Christian community, they wear a hijab too, head covers. It's the same thing. The decision to wear a hijab is often culturally driven and reflect of society's preference for modest dressing. However, it's important to note that not all Muslim women wear hijabs. It's a personal choice and freedom of expression. If you travel frequently, you may come across Muslim nation where hijabs are not commonly worn and that perfectly acceptable too. This poster discussing the general way of life for Muslim in daily basis. This includes referring from stealing, fighting, lower your gauge, showing kindness to the neighbor, smiling, visit the sick at home or in a hospital, demonstrating respect and tolerance towards the other non-Muslim, different religions, and giving charity to the poor. A specific codes of conduct promote positive teaching that benefits one's mindset and the moral values. Blue Mosque was constructed between 1609 and 1616. This is reflect the classical Ottoman style. The architect of this mosque, his name was Sedefkar Mehmed Aga, and he constructed during the time of Sultan Ahmed when he was in a power. Do you happen to know why the mosque is referred to as the Blue Mosque? is because the interior is adorned with approximately 20,000 blue ethnic tiles. Moreover, the mosque exterior upper level, which is the dome and the minaret, is also painted in blue. Hagia Sophia. It was constructed 537 AD by the Eastern Roman Empire. After the conquest of Constantinople, it was taken over by the Ottoman Empire. For 1000 years, Hagia Sophia was the most notable and tallest cathedral building in the region. This is the entrance here. A few years ago, I recall having to pay an entrance fee but now it is open to the public and free of cost. Okay guys, just to clarify, I'm not in a shoe store buying any shoes. These shelves are for storing shoes before you entering the mosque and it is free of charge. A while back, someone told me they don't take off their shoes when they're visiting a church. Well, it is understandable. 
it's worth noting that mosques have a different custom. There are several reasons why shoes are typically removed prior entering the mosque. Okay, here is a several reason why you need to remove your shoes before you enter into the mosque. It is protecting the carpet from damaging. Uh, you don't want to be bringing your street dirt and germs inside in the prayer place. Muslims kneel and prostrate on the floor on the carpet during their prayer, so to make sure it is clean. Making cleanness is essential. Therefore, washing rituals such as Odu that I just uh, showed you a little bit earlier are necessary to maintain cleanness. Hagia Sophia, this building, used to be cathedral, of course and then it was converted by Ottoman as a mosque. And then it converted back again as a museum. In this moment, it has been converted back again to a mosque. I have seen this situation many many times you know the person is engaged in a prayer inside the mosque and the guy who prostrate in the floor their children jump on their back feel like hey I'm riding a horse of course it's a funny but they're children you know they don't understand but one good thing is about the Muslims no matter what they will be remain and focus on the prayer We are here, the place called the Hippodrome of Constantinople. It is situated beside the Blue Mosque. This location is used to serve by Constantinople, I mean talking about the Romans. It's a venue of varieties of entertainment such as circus shows, sports, competition, chariot race and even military horse parade. There are two obliques parallel, the walled obliques and the obliques of Theodius. Both were constructed in the 3rd century CE, which is means Common Era. Welcome to Ortokoi Mosque and it can be found in next to Ortokoi Pier Square. It is constructed during 1720 by Sultan Abdul Majid. It is one of the smaller mosques in the area. Despite its size, it is a popular destination for visitors to the Bosporus. Many Turkish TV novellas or TV drama have been filmed at this location. If you go on Bosporus cruise, you will pass by it and the view from the boat is genuinely breathtaking, regardless it is a daytime or the nighttime. In Ortokoi, you will find a bustling area with various shops and restaurants and the one local speciality is, is kumpir. It's known as a kumpir, which is, what is kumpir? It is a baked potato with numerous topping that satisfied your taste buds. So if you ever come in Ortokoi, don't forget to try kumpir. It is really delicious. Thank you. 
As you can see, the sunset is approaching, which means it's almost time for the breaking of Ramadan. The traffic will soon dissipate, making it difficult to find a taxi. We should move swiftly before it happened, because I really hate it when I'm waiting for a long time and there's no taxi. Also, I would love to show you the beautiful night view of the Sultan Soleimani Mosque. This will be our final stop. Let's go. Okay, what is Ramadan? It is a month-long period of fasting observed by Muslim around the world from dawn until sunset. So after the sunset is called Ramadan break. A Ramadan break is also known as iftar, a meal served after sunset. The Muslims around the world observe Ramadan by abstaining from food, smoking, and even drinking water for the whole month. I mean to say, during the daytime, they don't drink, no eating, no food, no smoking, and everything happened after the sunset. Do you know that Istanbul has seven hills and Sultan Soleimani Mosque nestled on the third hills? The mosque was named after the Sultan Soleiman the Magnificent. He was the longest reign Ottoman Sultan in Turkey, who passed away in 1566. The architect behind of this structure, his name was Mimar Kokashinan and it was built during 1550 and 1557. The mosque measured an impressive 194 foot in a length, which is 59 meters, and 190 foot in a width, which is about 58 meters. Sultan Suleiman of the Ottoman Empire, the first time he broke the tradition of the empire. Why? Because he married a Polish-Ukrainian woman named by Alexandra Lyshevska. Many historians saying that Alexandra was a non-Muslim and she was captured by Crimean Tartar as a slave. So the later Sultan given Alexandra's nickname Roxalana. She became a legal wife and they had six children together including Selim too who would become a future sultan. Eventually, Roxalana became most influential and powerful woman in the Ottoman Empire. In the Ottoman Empire history, the Sultan Suleiman and Roxalana, oh, their love story was unbeatable, one of the best. You know what? Behind this mosque, there's a tomb of Ruxalana, Sultan Suleiman, and their children. So let's go and visit their tomb.
So this was our last stop. Now I have to walk 25 minutes to reach my hotel. I may have difficulties finding a taxi during the Ramadan break. As this video is about to be end, as a traveler I want to make your journey easy by providing helpful information. If you find my content useful, please support me by subscribing my channel. By doing so, I can create more travel video for you. If you enjoy this video, please give me a thumbs up and hit the bell icon for notification. Thank you for watching and I will see you in my next video. Thank you.